Let's get started here with a quote. Yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, today is a gift of God, which is why we call it the present. Bill Keen. I don't know Bill Keen, but I've heard this many times before. I I think you probably have too. If you haven't, it's pretty cool little quote here. And um, I relate to that. I do relate to that. Hey, Sam Pico, what's happening? How are you? Glad you're here. Um, <clears throat> kind of puts your puts you right smack dab in the present moment. And within 24 hours, living within a 24 hour time frame, because tomorrow hasn't happened, the past is gone, all we have is now. And usually what I do <clears throat> is if I'm thinking about the past, I'm ruminating about something bad, some relationship gone wrong, some thing that I did wrong. So I'm ruminating. It's not helpful. Right? It creates an emotional um, environment that's emotional in a negative way. And then if I think about the, the future, I'm just future tripping, right? And I'm clearing away, get this, the wreckage of the future. That's brilliant. I remember when uh, a good friend of mine told me that, that I'm clearing away the wreckage of the future. I kind of really, that helped me stop doing that. I couldn't really stop, but when I caught myself thinking in the future and clearing away that wreckage, that's all I was doing. So the future hasn't come. So how can I clear away any wreckage? It's not there to be cleared. So it's just a mental exercise in negativity, either forward or back. So if we stay in the present, it's a gift. If we appreciate that, that's all we have to do, really, you know? Kung Fu Panda, Juan R says, Michael O'Hare, what's going on? Welcome. Welcome all. So we're going to, we got a um, couple of announcements here. There is a <clears throat> 100 hands drawing challenge. I finally got this together and uh, started drawing. I think I'm on day five or six or something like that. Um, it starts tomorrow officially and um, in my Facebook group, Draw Juice Facebook group, we are going to be posting every day, encouraging each other, getting feedback. And it's just 10 hands a day for 10 days. So that's 100. And that's enough, I think. For me, drawing 10, 10 hands a day was like, you know, it gets a little, uh, it, it's hard. You know, um, there's some there's some hand reference that uh, I was using and I'll try to post that into the group, you guys, so you could uh, you can get that if you want. I I bought it. It's not that it's like three bucks or something like that from this guy. No, Bradley. But um, that's good stuff. I think um, or you can find some free stuff on the Web. There is a a website and you can draw figures and and hands and it's time so i'm just looking here on my browser to see if i can um, pull it up i think i had it before and that's kind of that's kind of handy for that there is an app called handy too uh, i think proco made it you can get it on the app store and it's got different hand positions it's okay it looks you know a little plastic, right? Because it's 3D model. But that's cool. So um, use the hashtag 100 hands juice for your social media and start drawing. Jump in, get it going on. I think I saw. Um, <clears throat> anyway, portraits and hands go together, especially, you know, if you're animating, you got to do hands. Otherwise, it's pretty painful. Uh, illustrations, hands. So, okay, so I want to do tonight, um, I want to block in, show you how I block in a drawing, and then um, I'll critique your work as well. So let me see here. 
Um, I'll get back to here. So I have some some ideas here, these concepts that I like to to use and think about when I'm drawing. And um, let's talk a little bit about brushes because brushes are important. And so there's a couple of brushes that I use that I kind of go to. And so if I open up my brush thing, here's your basic round, okay? And you can use that, but let's do something to it because it's a little bit weird. So in Photoshop, I've got the brush to shape and I can do all this stuff to the shape, opacity and so on. So the shape dynamics, I want that turned on and I want pen pressure that I can get a, a thick and a thin, okay? We're gonna fix this uh, inconsistency in the opacity. Just hang with me here. So transfer, that's how we're gonna um, get some of the opacity going, okay? So if I press lightly, I'm gonna get a semi, you know, a translucent mark. And if I press hard, it's gonna respond to that. So it's gonna be more opaque, right? And if I have my flow all, all the way up, the harder I press, the darker it is. So that's handy. That I like that touch set sensitivity. I usually turn my flow down so I can kind of control it a little bit more. And then we can go to the brush tip shape and go down to spacing and just really decrease that almost all the way. And then you get this smooth, smooth kind of uh, result. I love that. It looks so cool. Okay. Um, so that to me, that's, that's usable. Then if I want to, I can add another layer, uh, a texture layer. And that gives me this, this thing in here with scale, brightness, contrast, um, these modes here, those just kind of, I don't mess with those too much, but you can increase the scale of the texture. And these things don't really work too well for me. I, I mean, they kind of do, but they look ugly. And so I keep them turned down low so you don't notice it. But that's a really cool kind of, it went from a real digital kind of mark to a more of a traditional charcoal. You can feel the paper, right? It's like a graphite or charcoal. I can deal with that. So there's, that's, if you just have a basic brush, you can do all that with Photoshop. There's a brush that I kind of like over here that I go to that has a bit of a more, a little bit of a painterly thing built in. And I'm gonna go back to the brush settings and turn it so that it's almost kind of a 45 degree angle. And that's kind of cool. That's sort of painterly, sort of traditional looking. And so I'll go with that. I think I'm going to tune up my flow because I want to flow. The only thing is I can't get super dark with that when I have the texture. I have to really press hard. And so let me go back into there into the texture and see if I can make the scale smaller. All right. So that's a little, uh, a little lesson on how to deal with these brushes in here in Photoshop. It's quite uh, complex. So if I'm looking at this and I'm going to block in, I'm going to keep it, I'm going to go with my height first. I'm just going to find my height because height is easier than width. I don't know why but it just is. And I'm going to think of, remember, I'm going to do the la, la, right? I'm going to look, I'm going to analyze, and I'm going to analyze again. And I'm going to think about where's the light direction, okay? Camera left from the top, it looks like. And then there's a light, so that's a rim light, but the key light is straight ahead. 
in front of her. She can see a nice light um, lighting up her face almost from the front. Then you have the, the kicker or the rim light. And so it's like two light sources there. Um, the pose, right? So the, the angle, right? The gesture. If I was just to really quickly let me just do this thing a bit later. Right? Here's the gesture of the head, which has three main gestures, right? And then the gesture of the neck. Gesture of the shoulder, right? So you have this, this, and this. Okay. So now I want to, you know, express that we're underneath. So how do I do that? I'm going to quickly do some cross contours just this way. Wrap around. These kind of like depth lines, you could call them. And that's going to sort of tell me that this flat guitar pick looking thing is not flat now. It's this 3D triangle thing. Okay, so there's that. The ear is going to be in here somewhere in that middle third. And there's the hair. But right there is that under shelf, that bottom shelf of that connection right there, that triangle. That's going to tell me where I am in 3D space. Okay. And then we move up to the ear and back. So that's kind of like my little, my little notes. I can come here and bring in a rhythm to show me where the front and side, the front stops and the side begins and start to build everything out. Makes sense. Okay. So that's my little, my little notes to myself, my observation about the lighting, the positioning, and all that stuff. I'm trying to keep it simple. Uh, hey, Mamika, how are you doing? Welcome. So glad you're here. <clears throat> okay, so I try to think in, in the side and three quarter, you're going to have the head, which is basically one to one. It's as tall as it is wide. <clears throat> so I can use, you know, I can use a circle here. I can use a mod, you know, that triangle, right? So there's a few ways I can get into this. And I do I like that triangle so much. It doesn't cost me much. It's very inexpensive to use it in terms of how much I have to think. I don't have to think about any anatomy. It's a good read, right? Because it's simple and characteristic of the head. And I can tell with just this and a placement of the ear, what I, you know, what I've got. It's going to tell me a lot. Okay, so now let's go ahead and kind of thinking about thinking about this, let's say, you know, keeping those things in mind. We've got eyes in the center, but since we're looking up, the eyes are going to crowd out the top of the head, right? See if I go up, my eyes get taller and taller. You see more bottom than you do top. So I'm going to shade and favor my eyes slightly towards the top of the head and less towards the chin, not in the middle. Get my center line. <clears throat> and this thing, this uh, triangle head is a good read. And the read really, you know, I like a little mystery in my art, right? But if you're doing illustration, if you're doing animation, if you're doing movies, You've got to be clear 
Um, it does help to know who the good guy is and who the, who the bad guy, the villain is. in that shape language and letting the audience know. Uh, it, so it depends on what you're using this for, what you're doing it for. Um, and so the read is kind of this immediate reaction. It can be emotional, right? If it is, more power to you. Because you grab, emotion is king when we're talking about the audience and storytelling and art and music. Okay, so somewhere in here is this right here. And I just like to swing with an arc right around there, all the way down to the jaw, and it gets the masseter. There's a masseter muscle right here, the chewing muscle. That's kind of, that's in there. Everything is simple, elegant, um, connected. And the more connected, the more uh, alive it's going to look. If it's disconnected, it's going to die. Just like in life, we're social beings. We need to connect. We need to talk. Otherwise, we, we shrivel up and die. Same thing with your art. Same thing with your music. If you connect the verse to the bridge, to the chorus, it sounds better. People, people want to listen to it. So I'm going to do that with my drawing. I'm going to connect everything and make it alive, make it live. Okay, so that brow is a curved surface. See how that's curved? So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, I've used a curved surface for that. Go back somewhere there. And that nose, so I'm going to come down from, from here. I'm just going to build that eye socket. And that position right there, where you're looking at the underside of the nose, that's a tough one. We're not used to that. And so... Let's see, the root of the nose is here somewhere. So we have a top, you can see where that light is hitting it. We have a side, and it comes down like that. So this connects, the glabella connects the forehead to the nose and to the eye socket. And then we just swing around here. So I'm going to follow this and bring that in, come back out. I think I'm going to switch my brush to one of those uh, digital ones so we can see it a little bit cleaner what I'm doing. Hopefully. We've got the really crisp line. So there, so now we've got the cheeks lining up, the eyes lining up. We want everything to line up kind of parallel. So this, this, the cheeks there, mouth. So that's one thing I didn't do. I kind of usually line the features up vertically, right? And space and place everything. and then figure out how wide they go. How wide is the mouth? How wide is the nose, the eyes? So step by step, kind of doing everything. Makes sense? Let me know in the chat if it makes sense to you. So I'm just keeping it real generic. I want to go with the generic head, not the specific get a likeness yet because the less I try to copy this photo, the better 
I seem to do. The more I go for, for these generic type things over here, the more I concentrate on describing the form in space and using the rhythms in the planes, the better it's going to come out. And so I can use that to my advantage because then I can make my own statement. Um, I can add rhythm, right? Rhythm lines. I can add textures. And so these things are like a dance, you know, the rhythm lines, the movement. I want movement in my drawing. I want the dance. I enjoy dancing. So when I don't copy, I, I, I enjoy, I start to enjoy. I don't know if that makes sense. Anyway, so I'm trying to talk and do this at the same time. Um, okay, let me get that far cheek. And the denture sphere. And then the chin box. Now on women, the chin box isn't so boxy. It's a nice little round thing. Depends who it is. You know. On this person, it's a little bit smaller. Let me see. Check the chat. How are you guys doing over there? Oh, serious. Who's... Siri thinks I'm talking to us now. Okay. Come on, phone. Okay. So another thing I like to look for is um, triangles. Look at that lip. It's like a, a triangle there. Look at that top part of the cheek right here, triangle. Bottom of the nose, that underplane of the nose, triangle. Those things are easy to draw, easy to see, easy to measure, and they're so effective. The simplest statement is usually the best in art. How about, where's another triangle? The whole head was a triangle. Um, I see like a little triangle here. Look for triangles. You're gonna find a lot. I wanna do a whole video on that, because it's so fun. What you can do with triangles. I could say that bottom lip is like a triangle in reverse on the top lip. Okay. Think in terms of very simple 2D shapes. Sometimes the eyes, right? They're just the eye socket is a triangle. Uh, eyebrow triangle. For now. All right, what are we going to do here? Um, you know, it looks a little mechanical and robotic and stuff, but we're going to transform that. Anyway, this is just a block in. I'm not going to go, you know, completely wild with this. Get that hairline. So important for getting a likeness. Let's see her forehead here. And her hair is just just get the shape, get the general hair mass, get the shape. Don't worry about the individual hairs till, till much later. Again, using long sweeping curves or straights or 
S curves, C curves and S curves, using those long lines of which are going to really serve you well. This has a center. Find the center on every pin. Let's see, on that far eye, it's just a you know a straight line with a curve. Foreshortened very heavily. No problem. There's a lid inside there. I'm going to grab that lid. That looks a little small to me. It's going to make the lid, the outer lid, looks hard. Okay. And then let's line up tear ducts. Find the tear ducts. I can find the tear duct, right? That tear duct is not going to be over here. That's too close to the nose. It's like stuck on. A lot of people have that problem. Give it some room here, right? There's the side plane of the nose. Let it exist. Right? So I'm kind of following that. It kind of points to the tear duct too from this angle. And I want to connect everything. If you want to study something, connect it to everything and connect everything to it because we're all connected. Look, I'm going to use a triangle to get this in. Looking good. And then I'm going to round that out on the bottom side. The more structural it's going to look weird, but just go with it. You can make it look pretty and human later. That's what's so great about the, the tried and true methods. You know, they've been using them since for 500 years and they work. Move the base out a little bit there. Ricardo says, hey, Professor Chris and everyone. Hey, Ricardo Guido, what's happening? Juan asking the question here. I haven't practiced my face planes, but I see how too important it is to know. Yeah, it is. Because it really shows you the orientation, the position in space quite effectively. And if I try to to draw details and textures, I lose my myself. I lose <clears throat> my position and my relationship to that object. I guess I don't know if that makes sense, but somehow it's disorienting. You get lost in the trees and you can't see the forest and you can't find your way out of the forest. Same thing in a drawing. <clears throat> so I'm just kind of going along. Things are, you know, I can fix things. I can spot things a lot easier with straight lines and, you know, things like the, the wedge for the nose. Um, you know, easy, simple planes. I can fix portion problems much easier, much faster. And so. You know, when I used to draw, when I was a kid, I would just reinvent the wheel every time and just copy the surface. And, you know, lucky I was a good, I had a good eye so I could make sense of it. But it was, you know, it wasn't easy. It was a mystery. Every time it was a mystery. And that's cool as a kid, you know, you're amazed at drawing what you can do and all that. And then when you get kind of older, you want to go a little bit further. And so, um, and you want to go faster, right? You don't want it to be such a struggle. So the planes, rhythms, some anatomy, but it's not that crucial anatomy. 
So do it looks like we're looking up, you know, we've got that idea that if I'm looking up, it's hard for me to do a head looking up, but I can do a box. If I can handle the box, you know, I can map a head onto that or anything I want. This could be a building, a head, you know, and it's easier. This conveys that idea very clearly, a box in space I'm looking at. That's kind of what the, the triangle and the connection to the neck, you know, simple to that kind of gets me that. All these kind of depth lines wrapping around kind of like that, it helps. Okay, we've got a little eye in there, a little eye in here. Starting to come into that. Right, and then the nose could be just like a little comma or a number nine or even like a little lima bean, something like that, right? So I can sort of put that in there according to who this person, you know, looks like. Looks like on this person. Looks like a little number nine or something like that. And I could barely see it on the far side. There's a septum and I see a little triangle, something like that. And I've got this philtrum connecting the septum to the tubercle of the upper lip. There's a little triangle in there. There's Cupid's bow. Lots of triangles. It's a little bit too much. But you can overlap that part of the tubercle on the upper lip against the far wing of the lip and use it to express some dimension. And all that stuff. So that's how I would, how I would do a block in. You know, one way to do a block in. And of course, there's the hand in there. And we're doing hands, which is, um, you know, you could approach it. <clears throat> I won't go into the whole thing, but. Where does it start? Don't get cut off by this picture here. And just block in like a uh, straight line block in, like an envelope, and then break it down. You can use that method for everything in life. Break it, break it down. And then there's fingers. You can draw them like little, little tubes. Right? Everything is broken down into simple, simple stuff. More manageable. Oh, yeah. Believe me, I've drawn a, a lot of hands in my life. So. And I did it on the job. I did it <laughs> working under pressure, time constraints, struggling, you know? And so you can get it, you can do it like that. It's like trial by fire and you can struggle like I did, or you can jump in, take the hand drawing challenge and sort of get it, get it handled, you know? And I think you'll be happy you did do that. Okay, so that's kind of that. Any questions? What do we got here? Juan is thankful for having me as my professor. Cool. Yeah, right on. Thank you, Juan. Appreciate that. It's so fun to to be out here, and I'm 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 kind of a shy person. I'm, what do I want to say? There's part of me that, you know, is shy. So for me, 
getting out here doing this has taken years to to get to that to get to this level and um but if you put a guitar in my hand and a microphone i'm much more comfortable with that um, because i can kind of like be inside the music it's not me it's kind of it's the music you know so i've had to kind of get used to talking and doing art because before when i worked when i worked at uh animation companies and game companies you just do your thing you're like one of those art geeks and you don't talk you just do your art nobody bugs you except the producer <laughs> and so you don't have to talk and draw you just draw and you just don't explain it to anybody so i guess what am i trying to say is it's really it takes a while to be able to talk and draw and do it in front of people as well unless you're really outgoing then you don't have that problem you just jump in and do these things um, okay so that's kind of a block in that's a way to go about it i hope that was helpful any questions you know feel free to to ask and uh Keep these really simple ideas in mind, ball box tube stuff. And that'll help with complex poses and stuff. Um, that's my experience. And I'll share that with y'all. Okay, so let's go into uh, some of the stuff here. Now, one thing that I'm a little bit annoyed at is that there's directions for submitting your work and nobody followed directions. It's, uh, put your documents in one file, your photo and your art, since, you know, nobody can seem to follow that. So I'm just picking things out um, individually because I'm not going to waste my time setting it up because I'm doing this. You know, this is where I want to spend my time. I don't want to spend my time setting up files. You guys can do that if you want to, you know, a proper critique or any kind of critique. Okay. That would be great. Thank you for that. Now, this one, uh, I'm finding kind of the, the head is really undulating a bit too much so it's it's attracting my attention and then the center line since this is kind of out here and then this is really in here the center line is kind of it looks like i don't know where the center is so and then we have a bit of a problem with it looks spotty by spotty, I mean there's dark patches all over the place. And so um, you want to unify your lights and unify your darks. And this is maybe a little bit of a complicated lighting scenario, right? Because um, it just it just may be, that might be part of it. Um, hey, thanks, Mubika. This is even the sketch I did looks live. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and she also says, I have difficulties with three quarter head tilted backwards looking up. Yeah. In the course, right? In my course, I have the triangle head in different positions, right? So you have the three quarter, the side, three quarter back, and then tilted. I have a worksheet for that that you can work through all those positions let me know um that that should be helpful now one thing about this guy though his eyes look great his attitude looks great <clears throat> there's a person there so check that that's awesome still even though there's proportion problems or value problems you can still get off a good drawing it can still look good it can still convey you know, who you are by the marks that you make that's on that paper. You know, it may not be technically in all ways there, 
but it's enough there, right? And there's enough knowledge here that it looks, it still looks good. And so that's pretty neat. I'm always, that's, that's, that's really cool. So be encouraged. Now you're welcome, Amika. Um, so, you know, how can we, I'm going to take that thing up there. Uh, from this angle, we can use a triangle head, but here's another thing. The head types, right? You've got the ball box tube or ball box triangle teardrop shapes that you can use. This guy is kind of definitely a square, kind of masculine square kind of guy. So in my analysis, in my look, analyze, I'm going to ask myself not only the position, find the, the gesture, the lighting, I'm going to say, what kind of head type is this guy? And get something right away that may capture and get this guy's read quick. So that could work for me. Or it could be a couple of boxes together, or it could be a combination of the ball and the box, or the ball and the triangle. So, <clears throat> you know, use that kind of stuff. All right, let's, let's start chipping it away at this a little bit. It's, it's very blocky. So I'm going to use those blocky type shapes. Let's say, you know, masculine, youthful kind of guy. Makes sense. It's that read, right? It's the um, <clears throat> language of shape, the shape language. That's our, that's our letters. That's our sentences, right? Well, using the shape language. If I used all round for this guy, he'd look friendly and cute and approachable. If I used blocky stuff, He's strong, he's stable, and maybe he's a little boring, a little, a little dumb. Okay, that's that shape language. You know, maybe he's predictable, he's steadfast. That's what the square is going to give you. And if you look at Disney, you look at uh, DreamWorks, you look at their characters, Blue Sky, and analyze, right? What's the shape language? They're doing that for that read so that you you read that into it instantly. You know who this character is. Okay, <clears throat> so let's see. Eyes are in the center, let's say. He's slightly tilted back, but I'm just gonna go with the center. Here's this. The eyes are here. Roughly speaking, the brow, that bottom shelf, upper shelf of the cheek. Here's another block in, so I guess we're doing block ins today. And that changes that center line, right? Because it's a submerged denture sphere underneath the surface. Okay, so that simple ball idea is going to get me there. It's got a pretty small mouth. You get the rhythm of the chin. This is big and boxy. You see that? Boom, boom, boom. There's a chin box there. Notice how, you know, I can pull a rhythm right to here and connect it. But I'm going I'm to want to refine that, right? I can pull this here. And now if I take a, another look, let me, let me connect this here. Now we find that the zygomatic arch comes this way, makes its way down, 
down again, and then over, and then here at the front of the chin. So there's a kind of a stair step architectural um, structure here that we have. Isn't that neat? You wouldn't think about that. You'd think beautiful skin, uh, texture, anatomy, but that structure that's there, I think that helps if we know what that is that we're, we're dealing with. Check the chat. Okay. You guys keep talking to me. I don't want to be, I don't want to be isolated. I want to be connected. Just like my drawings. The more you guys talk, the less, the more connected I feel. Cause I'm over here in California by myself. You guys are there, right? But we're doing this to connect. We're doing this to learn. All right, so I got my my nose, a typical generic wedge, the kind you put underneath the door to stop it from closing, right? The wedge. The glabella up here. The nose is narrow at the top, wider at the bottom, kind of like a necktie, right? It's kind of like this. There's the glabella. The root of the nose comes out, follow the nose, right? And then we have the side plane. And then the underplane, right? That's going to give you clear front, sides, tops, and bottoms. That's what you want. I'm um, going to hatch out this ear a little bit. I tell everybody to memorize the ears. Because when you get there and every time it's a struggle, it's not worth it. It's easy enough to memorize it. So just get it handled, you know. Memorize it. Okay. So this guy's nose is kind of... Oh, well, you know. Then he's got this rhythm, you know, he's got the laugh line. He's got this fold of skin, the nasal labial fold that I learned about when I worked on The Godfather. I just did a post about that on my Instagram. I was the lead character designer on The Godfather game in Electronic Arts and my art director. You know, so I was doing these hundreds of faces and learning how to paint digitally. This was like 2004. And it was all kind of new back then in the studios, you know, because before that we were drawing paper. Okay, so he would come by and he'd make these comments about my proportions. Like usually I would get like from a profile, I would stretch the end of the lips, the terminus, I'd pull it back and the eyes, they'd be stretched laterally like that. And then he would talk about this nasal labial fold thing this fold here. So the nasal is the the nose and the labial going down to the mouth. There's like a nasal labial fold in there. Some people have a lot of skin there. And I just thought, this guy's making this up. There's no such thing as a nasal labial fold. I thought I knew more than him, but it turns out he was right. And so I paid attention to what he was saying more after that. Okay, so we have this hexagram kind of type of thing for our eye socket. And we have an inside type deal here. And we've got it on the other side too. And then we have this overlap of the brow and then comes the forehead. I need to bring mine down. I need room for the hair. And so that was such a fun job because I, like I said, I painted and drew my ass off everyday portraits for work for the Godfather. 
and man, I made sense. That's where I made sense of the planes of the head and the rhythms. Before that, I did, I don't even know if I knew about them. And I'd been working professionally in animation before I went into games. You know, I probably looked at it and said, that's dumb. I'm way beyond that, you know? So the, my ego would trip, trip me up and screw me up, you know? And it wasn't until later that I kind of incorporated those things, went back to school and found the utility of that stuff. And was able to, you know, go further, go faster. And that's what I'm trying to bring to you guys. The things that I used in the studio are what I'm teaching you. So on a professional level, this is what I did. Um, <clears throat> so if it's good enough for me, I hope it's good enough for you. I have a feeling it is. Of course, these are just tools, not rules, right? And you can drop these at any time. You can find out what works for you. And that's what you do. You know, I have things that work for me and I use those things. Let's get those eyes in there. He's still looks a little strange. Get that bottle going. It's a little bit overlapped by the nose, right? That nose, the overlaps create dimension. So I'll clearly show that overlap on the far side. Good deal. The letter Y, boom. That's your overlap. The Y and the T principle. So simple. So I'm using that right here. Uh, so he's there. That I meets the socket, the bone. Study everywhere. Study. I mean, we have the internet now. It's so powerful. And you can study anything and everything 24 hours a day. <laughs> you know, guys like to do that. I think maybe more than girls, but I might be wrong. But guys geek out, get into that. Of course, there's girls that do that too, but I think on average, you know, guys might like learning YouTube videos it's about all kinds of stuff. Um, <clears throat> see how the forward, the forehead tilts back in a specific place. I can get that, express that dimension out of there. Usually there's a little peak right here on the root of the nose, kind of peaks up like a house. Um, okay, so I'm here, his mouth is here, and I would just do a, a generic kind of mouth at the beginning. Get that lower one. It's got a small mouth, right? And maybe it's a little bit further down. Somewhere down there. And then I can, you know, modify as you go. And I'm going to keep it, you know, really simple. Lots of simple shapes. Think of little, you know, like lima beans or kidney beans or commas to help you with these simple ideas. Uh, let's go down, then he's got this big old chin. He's got a box, that chin's gonna fit into the jaw, so I want the jaw to come out from behind. Again, the letter Y, right? The chin overlapping the jaw. He's got a dimple there, so I can bring that into it. So there's that chin. Goes way, way up there. Right 
there's kind of a W shape under here. Okay. See that W? Use that idea. And we've got the side plane that's catching that core shadow, which you did beautifully. And you did this so nicely. Chin, underplane, coming in front of the neck. Nice job. It's beautiful. You really handled this, rendered it. Charcoal is beautiful. Your, your value range from dark to light is awesome. Dramatic. So you're doing that great. You're not afraid of the dark. And that's one area where people do struggle is they're afraid to go hard. <clears throat> Alrighty. So here we are. There's a lot more we could do here, but we'll just move on to the next one. Again, using lots of straight lines because this is characteristic of this guy with this boxy model dude. So use straight lines, you know, if you want. Curve later. A little bit. Even his eyebrows can be kind of boxy. He didn't even do his hair. Who cares? I didn't get his hairline in. Get it in. <laughs> Alright, then let's round that out. And we'll get one more thing. Cool. Did a great job. Loved it. I, you know, I kind of think maybe just a little bit of proportions and, you know, one thing at a time, right? You got the, the dramatic lighting, you know, you're handling your medium. Good. Check. You've got rendering. Check. Um, you know, showing form, check. You have a person there, check. All those are great. And then there's a few more, right? And so it's hard to do them all. That's why you're studying. That's why you're here. And so work on your proportions when you're, when you're ready to. You know what I'm saying? Not all at once. Break it down. Okay. Good. Let's go to the next. See, I can't stop drawing. Once I get started, I can't stop. You guys know what I'm talking about? I think you do, because that's why you're here. Because you love it. Okay, where are we at? This is a random question, but what's your favorite Disney movie? Oh my God. Thank you, Juan. A good drawing. Maria did it. Maria, good drawing. Okay. Um, my favorite Disney movie. Um, my favorite Disney movie. Tarzan. I think I liked, you know, Little Mermaid when it came out. Like, that stuff was, like, amazing animation. Glenn Keane, all the stuff he did. Um, Aladdin. Snow White way back, you know. So, God, there's so many things. Um, how about you? What's your favorite Disney movie, you guys? And if you can tell me what's this symbol right here, you guys are hip. Tell me what it is. All right, this is wonderful. This is beautiful. It looks so well rendered. Uh, your technique on the paper is very fine, very smooth and delicate. It's like airbrush, you know. 
then you did that on that texture paper, like a laid texture. Laid paper has this kind of texture to it that it picks up. I don't like that, but because it's hard to draw on, but you did it so nice. Look at that neck. So again, the rendering is really nice. The technique of charcoal and paper is nice. I'm just looking here. Yeah. Overlaps are good, the parts fit together. Maybe just a little bit. Um, kind of straightening out the head, sort of. Because uh, it got a little pushed to the left. And so. that could be straightened out. And the way you do that is you find the center line, you know, or you find a center line and make sure you measure this compared to that. And you can see this one is a little shorter than that one. And you've got it kind of equal somehow. And so that's why a little bit of the, you want to take the 10,000 foot approach and get the overall impression Meaning, when you build a house, you put the foundation and then you frame it. <clears throat> okay. You do that before you put the uh, wallpaper and the carpet and the chandelier and all the stuff that makes it look pretty. Don't do that yet, right? You don't put the wallpaper on before you have the walls up and sheetrock. Right? Otherwise, the paper will just fall down. Uh, the pretty decorations on the table will get rained on if there's no roof. So um, you want to protect yourself by working the really big, simple ideas first. And that is the planes of the head, the center lines the big planes, the front plane, side plane, top plane, before you get into rendering the beautiful parts that you did so well. So all of us have weaknesses, right? Some, some of us are rendering really well. Some of us are ex, uh, expressing planes and dimension, 3D architecture really well. Some of us are doing details really well. Some of us are doing a combination of those things well and not so good at some others. So it's all about practicing all the fundamentals enough so that they're, you know, you don't forget them. And each time you do that, you get better and better. And the reward, there's a payoff there uh, at the end. Uh, and there's not some, some glaring things that when you step back, you think, oh gosh, I missed that. Or now I see it. You got to step back often and look at it really small and squint and see if your tonal structure holds up, see if your planar structure holds up. And that's simple stuff that we all forget to do. Uh, could I skip that one? Okay, I'll skip it. Uh, logo of the rock band. Okay, I should have known that. I know who this guy is, but uh, Lincoln Park. Poor guy. I guess you're a big fan of his. Yeah, great music, huh? Right, Juan? Okay, I'll leave it at that as per your request and go to, to this one. Like this. Uh, who did that? Is that Juan? Is that you too? Because it looks so beautifully rendered. Let's just look at this for a second. It is just so nice what you're doing here with the charcoal. I don't know if that's you, but yes, yours. Great job. Everything's good here, man. I give you all the check marks, proportion, structure, anatomy. Uh, technique, application, right, of the medium, that's your technique, the details and textures, the, the positioning, looking up, you know, that hard camera angle, 
bingo on this one. Please put your things in one file because I don't want to do that. Um, so just, uh, I think it's awesome. You, awesome, okay. Good deal. No, no, all the shapes. You're really good at seeing shapes, Warren. A lot of people are good at seeing shapes. Some aren't. That's another thing, like shape recognition and being able to put it down simply one shape next to the next so that they form together to form a picture, right? Interlocking shapes. I I'm, wasn't a good shape seer. I was kind of a good tonal seer. And guys that I worked with in animation could see shapes because everything's like pencil line. You, you're not there to paint things when you're animating. That's like, you can't, you don't have time. So you're drawing line drawings and then they paint it in ink and paint when we were doing 2D stuff on paper. So um, they saw shapes really good. So it took me a long time to see shapes and break away from what I was good at. What I was good at was seeing tone and rendering surfaces, um, shapes, line wasn't my thing, but I trained on it and I, I can do it if I need to, but it's not my aesthetic and it's not my knack. You know what I'm saying? So everybody, we all have weaknesses and then we, we, we work the full orbed picture so that we are, you know, competent and we never reach perfection. <clears throat> okay. So what do we got here? We got this. I don't know who did this. They put this last week, I think, and I didn't get to it. Yeah. The lips took a while. Good. Man. It's great. Okay, this one's beautiful. It's very pretty. I like that there's, again, a person there emerging from the material on a flat piece of paper. The, the attitude, the tilt of the head, right? The gesture of the head. Someone's thinking. There's a read, you know, an immediate read. What do you think she's thinking? I like that. Um, you know, maybe if I was just to quickly, cause we're almost running out of time. If I was going to say something about, maybe I would quiet some things down, right? Cause you have all this shine competing, you have highlights competing everywhere. So if you'd sort of tone them down. We'll get to the highlight in the important places, like on her eyes, on near her face, near that focal point. I'll draw you in. So keep that other stuff. Um, what do you want to call it? Set. Join. You kind of quiet some things down. You bring them together. The things you separate out, that gets the attention. And so you want her eyes, nose, lips to get the attention, usually, in a portrait. So that kind of helps me, you know. You can have subtle details and some subtle highlights in the hair. And then now we're getting down to even more of an intimate feel, sense of who this person is for me. For me. Um, and then you could figure out some of these basic things like the core shadow as this bone turns and do bring in your modeling factors of your highlight halftone core shadow reflected light and make sure those are like valid, like your architecture is valid and the lighting on that, the value to bring out the 3D form is mapped to that. That makes sense. Um, right, so there's ways you could go further to bring the 3D quality to this, if that's what you wanted to do. Like that core shadow again on that far cheek. That can bring that into or bring out the 
architecture in their base. And since I made that darker, and since value is contextual, everything's in relationship, it makes the now automatically I get a reflected light on that side plane of the jaw. And little, you know, starts to happen. If I know a little bit about the chin box, I could say, well, okay, she has a rounded chin, I know how to like that. And maybe just a little boxy. And maybe it fits in down here a little bit. I'm not sure I have to work on that. And then if we go a little darker here because there's an occlusion shadow chin on the neck, bring that in. And then that's going to make the chin pop a little bit. And you don't have to overdo it. And then I'll go a little darker with the hair next to that. And that'll make the neck look more like a cylinder. Hopefully. And then just... Uh, Smooth some of that stuff on it. I don't know what's happening here, but you know, there's a throat there. I don't know if this is all in shadow. If it is, this would be, this light would be, and the shadow would be a little more obvious. And then you could think about it this is a two, you know, how would I get that to look round? Then I'd have to go darker and in here. So I have a place to bring this out. And then I might have to go darker in here. So it just keeps, you know, building and you have to trust the process. Right? You know what I'm talking about? I just want that to be more clear. Okay, now what? Where that hair is touching your head, the face, your cheek, there's going to be a little occlusion shadow there and a little ridge. We can separate that out a little bit. And it's going to get dark and murky in there. Indistinct. The eyes look great. They did a beautiful job. You've got a specular highlight across the iris. And the pupils, where you've got your black accents, that's great. You know, they have a really dark and that's okay. Cool stuff. Yeah. Um, under the nose, since that wedge projects out quite a bit, you can go, and since it seems like it's a, a light source that's singular, you can go ahead with the edges there. That nose is a projection onto the upper lip. And you can go ahead and express that a little bit more. There's going to be those hard edges right there. More than you think on a beautiful face, but they are. Take advantage of it because those hard edges make your soft edges look softer and vice versa. So get a little edge variety happening. You know what I mean? And then again, modeling factors, the highlight, the half tone on the nose, the core shadow and the reflected light. And you can just think your way through it. It's quiet down now because it's in the shadows quite a bit. Something like that. And then this might get a little softer on this side. Soft. I don't know. You know, so I just want to reiterate that there's the 
twin brother idea, or the siblings, or the brother sister, or they follow each other. The cast shadow, core shadow, right? They follow each other all the way down the form. You can see that? Cast shadow, the chin, form shadow, the chin, right? Form shadow of the lip, cast shadow into form shadow, into a cast shadow into form shadow, right? It's like a poem. It's like a repeating, it's like a verse, chorus, verse, chorus. Look for that stuff, and you're going to be able to squeeze architecture and form out of these subtle, subtle areas. You're going to start to see these things more and more. And you're going to start to be able to not only see them, but use them. And that's when it gets really exciting. Because then when you're sitting there drawing from imagination, you can get pretty far just with these simple ideas, you know? Then you can create characters for yourself and, you know, solve problems that way. <clears throat> it's fun stuff. I guess I'll maybe I'll stop there. Stop here. Thank you guys so much for for joining me. Um, I want to make one more mention about the head, you know, the hundred hands, right? You guys were starting tomorrow. So ten hands, ten days. And um, you can do it. And if you haven't joined up join the facebook group right here we got 3.6k members people who are just like yourself join um i put uh you know announcements people post the drawings people support each other give feedback it's a great place so join that Link is in the description. It should be, I'll put it in there. And yeah, hands. Here's my hands I've been doing. Day one, day two. You know, I started shading them and then it was just too much work. You don't have to shade them. Don't bother unless you really want to work hard. So then I gave shading up, right? I think I got through three days of that and then I just went to line. And that's totally fine because I'm, you know, I'm studying gesture and studying structure. And some of them I'll put some tone down. Okay. So just do what you can and no one's going to judge you. Don't judge yourself. Uh, but you can, you can look back and see your projects. So you can just judge yourself against yourself. Don't judge yourself against me or anybody else. And just see what you did the day before. Just make a little bit of progress, a little bit, and then celebrate it. Take yourself out, buy yourself something, watch a show that you like, you know. All right, people. Um, thanks so much for being here again. And I'll see you in the challenge. Um, thank you, Mamika. Yeah. All right, Juan. Anuja says, I have to practice a lot. I can get likeness. I'm portrait drawing, which I do tell me. Or she can't get a like this. Okay, you're going to have to come back next week. Join the Facebook group. Uh, buy, buy my course over at drawjuice.com. Link is in the description. I cover all that stuff in my course. Okay, come back next time. Um, <clears throat> Anuja, great to have you here. Juan, <clears throat> San Pico, everybody. Um, Michael, you guys, peace. And we'll see you tomorrow. I'm going to end this stream right now. Ciao.